With inflation hovering around its highest rate in 40 years, the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates several times in 2022. This is Fed Chairman Jerome Powell on what will be needed to ensure a long economic expansion. That's going to require the Fed to tighten interest rate policy and do our part in getting inflation back down to our 2% goal. The way the central bank does this is by changing the federal funds rate, its main tool for managing the economy. You can see on this chart that the rate was lowered to nearly 0% in 2020 to boost the economy at the beginning of the pandemic. There is an important job for us to move away from these very highly stimulative monetary policy settings. Adjustments to the federal funds rate influence a range of borrowing costs, from how much you owe on your credit card to mortgage rates. They also shape broader decisions made by companies, like how many people to hire or whether to raise prices. Here's how the federal funds rate works and how just one rate can guide the entire economy. The Fed meets every six or so weeks, and they're looking at a range of economic data at those meetings. But they have two main goals. One is to ensure stable prices and low inflation, and the other is to make sure that the labor market is strong. Nick Timoros covers how the Fed guides the economy through crises. He says you can think of the economy as a car and the Fed as the driver. They want to make sure that the economy is not growing too slow, and when it is, they'll push on the gas. But they also want to make sure that it's not going too fast, and so they'll slow the economy down by pressing on the brake. This is where the federal funds rate comes in. When you hear on the news about the Fed raising interest rates or cutting interest rates, what they're actually deciding to do is to raise or to lower the federal funds rate. This is the interest rate that banks charge each other to borrow money overnight. But there's a catch. The federal funds rate isn't directly set by the Federal Reserve. So in order to influence it, the Fed uses a couple of other tools to set a target range. These tools are rates that the Fed controls in its role as a bank for banks. Here's the target range that was in place during 2021. The Federal Reserve sets an upper limit and a lower limit, with the goal of keeping the effective federal funds rate somewhere in between. The upper limit is determined by interest on reserve balances. This is the rate of interest a bank gets on deposits, known as reserves, that it keeps at the Federal Reserve. The lower limit is determined by overnight reverse repurchases. These are securities, like treasury bills, that the Federal Reserve lends to banks, usually for a day, while paying interest. On this chart, you can see where the Fed has set the target range between the two yellow lines. The blue line, which is the effective federal funds rate set by banks, sits between the upper and lower limits. As the target range changes, the effective rate goes up or down with it. So far, they've had very successful control over guiding the federal funds rate and guiding all short-term money market rates to where they generally are trying to move them. The Fed makes these adjustments in fairly small increments. Its rate increases for 2022 are expected to only change by about a quarter to half of a point at a time. So how can these tiny adjustments for banks help cool down the entire economy? It all has to do with how those rates ripple through the system. As banks are charged more to borrow, they'll in turn charge their customers more, affecting the cost of existing loans and demand for new borrowing. The goal of raising these rates is to drive down demand. Inflation results when supply and demand are out of whack. The Fed can't do anything to increase the supply of oil or to increase the number of houses for sale. The supply side is something out of their reach, but they can bring supply into demand by reducing demand. Here's how interest rates can influence demand and inflation. When rates are low, more people and businesses are likely to take out loans. Higher demand for goods and services, as well as lower rates, allows employers to open more positions to meet demand and raise wages to appeal to potential employees. Consumers then turn around and spend those wages on goods and services, which in turn can lead to more jobs and higher prices. The opposite happens when rates are higher. Fewer people and businesses take out loans, job growth slows, and spending decreases. Higher interest rates may also make it more appealing to save. Inflation slows as supply and demand balance out. While interest rates can be effective in bringing inflation down, a rate hike could take some time to make an impact. Think about your own life as you go through making different decisions about whether to buy a house and how big of a house to buy. It may take a while for this to, to ripple through the housing market, for example, but in six or 12 months, we could begin to see 
um, you know, a less demand if interest rates are high enough to slow interested consumers. But while inflation may take time to come down, consumers and businesses will likely feel the impact of higher interest rates on loans, mortgages, and credit cards right away.